So yeah, Jake, uh, Jake Taylor is one of the best fighters in Australia and if not the world, in my opinion and many other people's people's opinion. So he'll be running us through the down rail of Soto. Um, you will now see. Sorry about my microphone, I think they run flat. Uh, but yeah, let's crack into this down rail of Soto. He goes to grip here, guess what? Whee! I've got that grip straight away. Right? So it is achievable. We're just doing it from the most likely position at first, and then we can move on. Right? If you're finding that you're getting into someone's armpit, getting what's called an underhook a lot easier, great, that may be a grip for you. It's different for everyone. Body size, shape, who you're paired up against. Someone might be really tall. Generally, if someone's really tall versus you, Underhook's going to be way easier to get if you can just punch those Height differential, if someone's shorter than you, the head's a little bit easier. Cool. So, we're going to build some color. Cool. Now, we don't have to worry about this hand at the start. However, I do want people to start worrying about it a little bit later on as they get used to it. So, ignoring this hand, our back foot chambers in and remains flat. Now, I don't mean, okay, it has to be perfectly at 9 degrees here can turn if that's A-OK. -okay. The reason why we want it turned out into the center is when we step through, to have it turned out this way turns our hips in a way where we can bring our other leg out and around, right? If we step with our foot pointed this way, I'm not going around Bo, I'm trying to go through him and it's a lot harder. Get into collar here. We chamber. When I chamber, it depends on the distance that Bo's foot is away. That is something that you do not need to worry about at the moment. Your body will adjust to that and you'll get used to it. Uh, because you shouldn't be like, oh yes, it's about two foot lengths away from me, so I need to step here. It's, you shouldn't really be looking at someone's feet a lot of the time because as soon as you do this, oh crap, you get a hand on So just try and make it. Equal with your foot or just a little bit further, right? Reminder, when I'm stepping like this, I'm not going back like this. I'm leaning forward. Like this. Cool. It means that if Bo starts to get a lot of resistance against me, I'm not going to get thrown backwards. He has to win that battle of throwing my backwards, my, back, uh, my balance backwards first to then throw me. Cool. So we step forward. Boom, applying pressure the entire time. Good length. Once we step this foot forward, boom, we transition our other foot out and around. We try and get around their foot as much as possible to get in between their legs. I'm just going to move this foot out. So here, this is for dramatic purposes. That's actually pretty hard when you're uh, versing someone who's got this leg back. But we're trying to get that. So, we step. Flat foot, boom, step around. Lastly, just like a normal Soto, as this foot starts to get weight, we're lunging with this foot, right? Just the footwork component. Boom. Stepping out and around, and as this starts to get weight on it, we're lunging, right? If we don't do that, I'll be sitting like this. Crap! Trying to kill him. There's not really that much of a weight differential between Bo and myself at the moment. Um, so he's going to win that battle moment. If you have a weight differential, sure. If you are the heavier of the two, you can normally just power through. Right? If you're not, mm, up on. That's why we want to lunge through. We want to use as much of our momentum, as much of our strength as possible to push through our target. That's left. Flat, circle, onto the ball, lunge. Going down the list. Once we get all that down pat, our arm. Too many people are opening up our shoulder. Or opening up our shoulder. Yes, collective. Come in. Uh, we don't want to open up our shoulder like this. One, you'll start getting shoulder problems because uh, as you're going for the throw, you're going to put too much pressure into your shoulder at a point where it's not designed for that. People's shoulders aren't designed to have a mass 
massive amounts of pressure push through that knee. So we want to make sure that we keep it in. How we do that is we start hugging their head to ours like this as we go through. Then the last part of that, as I've talked, bicep kisses their chin and we use it to hug, elbow goes up, fist goes down. What that ends up looking like, from here, without feet, I'm just going to turn those a little bit more angled. My fist over here, over yonder, my biceps already into the chin of his helmet. You may not get underneath their helmet, that's fine. As long as you're hugging in, boom. You don't allow that shoulder to open up. You hug in, I'm lifting my elbow and punching my fist down, right? Because wherever the head goes, the body follows. If I was leaning his head into me this way, oh, I can't really do that, right? However, if he leans into me this way, yeah. And then I break it first, or I break it as I go, it's a lot, ooh, a lot easier. Okay, recap real quick. Flat, circle, pressure, lunge. Hug, punch down, elbow up. Cool. Things to remember, yeah? Right, yo, beans of coolness, let's pair up. What do we call that? What do we call it? Down rail Lesoto. Down rail Lesoto? Down rail Lesoto. Roger that.